Okay, let's prepare for the quiz uh, on rules of inference, uh, propositional. So here is a statement uh, about Alice and her pets, or rather by her pet Quarky. And we have the following information about if a pet is old, it sleeps a lot. The only pet without legs is my goldfish. My goldfish is young. If a pet with legs sleeps a lot, then it is brown. Okay, so let's see what our... The first thing we need to do, in this case it's not given, sometimes it is given, is to give names to the properties. So I prefer to always use a letter that is kind of rem reminds me of what it is. So I'm going to use the letter O, sorry, the letter O for this old. So quirky is old. I'm making a statement about quirky because that's what we're going to do, right? Um, at the sleeping, so let's call it S, quirky sleeps a lot. Uh, the only pet without legs, oh, so legs. I could make a, uh, a proposition that says don't have legs, but I like positive uh, information, so I'm going to say has legs. Q has legs, so I, I'm going to have to negate it in this case. Goldfish, yeah, that is seems to be a property to be a goldfish, so Q is a goldfish. Goldfish. Okay, my goldfish, my goldfish, I have this now, young. Do I have young? Well, I have old, which is, of course, the negation of, of, of young, right? Oh, okay, you could argue a little bit, or uh, what about somebody middle-aged? But okay, I hope you understand here that young was a negation of old. So I don't need a predicate for that, a uh, proposition for that, sorry. And if a pet with legs, we have legs, sleep slot is brown. Oh, brown. Brown is a uh, property that I have to say. Q, Q is brown. Okay, so I now distilled all the properties that are mentioned and in these uh, propositional uh, variables and what I now need to do is write each of these sentences in these variables in formal la language so let's number these sentences one two three four and five so what does one say one says if a pet is old it sleeps a lot it's a clear implication so old implies s what is two same? The only pit without legs is my goldfish. Now, here English already throws you a little curveball because how, how are we going to say this? The only pet without legs is my goldfish. So what does that mean? So either you have uh, legs, and then you could be a lot of other stuff, or you don't have legs, but then you have to be a goldfish. The only pet without legs is my goldfish. So if you do not have legs, you must be a goldfish. So here we see that is actually the content is really an implication, namely, if you don't have legs, then you are a goldfish. Okay, my goldfish is young. Again, the English kind of takes away the fact that we are thinking about Quarky. We don't know yet that Quarky is a goldfish. So what it really says that if Quarky is a goldfish, then Quarky is young. So it's again an implication. So three is. Um, young, which was not old, then, oh no, sorry, 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 I'm reading wrong. If you golf is, an, I'm, I'm reading it the wrong way. So, if you're, if you're a goldfish, if quark is a goldfish, so if G, then not, oh, not young. Uh, sorry, not old, so young. Fourthly, if a pet with legs sleeps a lot. And English there throws a little curveball when it really says that if a pet has legs and sleeps a lot, so there's an end there, but the English allows you to say things with different ways, make these conjunctions, with legs sleeping, okay? So that means uh, L and S, those two together imply that it is, if a pet with legs sleeps a lot and it's brown, okay, B, and then five, quark is not brown, so not B. And that's all the information I have, and from this, what I have to do, so to show, well, I have to show that quark is young, in other words, not O. All. all right, so how do we do this? There are many things now, we, so what we are allowed to do? Let's, let's say first what we are allowed to do. So we have, these are for the moment all the truths that we have. And we can use at any time any of these truths as many times we can use the truth as many times as we want. And we now have our rules of inference that we're going to use to deduce new statements. Now, 
I have, let's look at what most of these statements involve implications. And remember, for implications, there is two ways of distilling information out of an implication. Namely, if you know the hypothesis, then you conclude the conclusion. And that is called modus ponens. Remember? But there's another way, and that is as important, namely, if you know that the conclusion is not true, therefore the, the, the premise, the hypothesis could not be true, so we can conclude not be, and this is called modus tollens. Okay? Okay. So, in other words, what are we looking for? So let me now say what we're doing. We're looking... This is what you want. Something about O. What, is, what statements are about O? Well, there's a statement about O here and a statement about O here. So perhaps I need both, perhaps I can do with one. Okay, if I want to get, if I want to, you get to this, it's in the implication, it's the conclusion of the implication, so I'm going to do modus ponens, I need to get G. How can I get G? Well, the only other thing that talks about G is this one. Again, it's a conclusion. So if I want to draw the conclusion by modus ponens, I need not L. Where is not L? Where is L? Or not L, of course. Either one, right? L is only mentioned in this one, about, apart from the one that I just mentioned, uh, looked at. But now it's in, in the premises. Or it's even more complicated. It's part of the premises. But okay, it's on the side of the premise. So it's, to, to get to it, we need to do modus tollens on this one. So we need negation of that. Oh, 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 but I have that. So, okay, I, I got a strategy. Perhaps I'm not out of it, but let's see. So let's see where we get now. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying, okay, I start with uh, four and five. So for the, for the clarity, I'm gonna copy them again. So this is four. So I, I please on a test, copy these things, make it clear to me, number things or whatever you wanna do. That, that, that where are these truths coming from, okay? So I'm also using not be, and from that I can conclude by modus tollens, the negation of the hypothesis. So not, but be careful, we're negating an expression, so we should put this expression between parentheses, okay? Not L, N, S. So let's number this. I call this our sixth truth. We have now six truths. We started with five, but we now have six. What do we do with this? Well, sometimes, because this, when we have negations that are not negations, we have talked about this so many times now, negations that of, of a large expression are very hard to parse, to understand. So it might pay off here to do logically equivalent by the Morgan law with not L and O, or O, -O or not S, right? I mean, the Morgan switches. An end becomes an or, and an or becomes an end. So not L or not S. Good. Uh, I'm not all the way, not at all where I am. So I get a little bit stuck, it seems now, because the next thing I would want to do, remember, was I was thinking of, um, well, let's go trace back, right? I was trying to find O. I said O is here, so I need G. For G, I need to know something about not L. But the problem is I, I have something about not L, but there's an OR here also. That's annoying, right? So uh, what, what can I do with an OR? Because you could say, okay, not L or not S implies not L. Mm -hmm. No, that's not true. You cannot conclude that, right? Um, you take Either I take, but well, not, not exclusive, I take a soup or I take a salad, but perhaps I really want to take both, fine. But if you say it was a soup or a salad, you cannot conclu conclude that it was a soup. That's the point. That's the, the problem that we have. Now, going back to what we want, we kind of was thinking, oh, here we have O, and so that's going to work for us. But we see we also have O here. <coughs> So, what about that? Can I somehow use this then, perhaps? Okay, so what, what do we have now? Okay, let's, let's see what we have. Um, I need to get to this. So, and again, that's fine. In this implication, it's in the premise. So, when I use my modus tollens, 
I will get the negation of that, which is what I want. So, okay, fine. So I need to find something that tells me it's not S. Okay, where's the information of node S? Well, I have this information of node S. So I'm kind of a little bit stuck here. I see that if I have not L, I know what to do because I'm going to go through this loop here. If I not L, then I get G, and from G I get not O, and I'm done. If I have not S, I can do modus tollens, and I get O, uh, and, and get not O. Again, I'm done. Uh, so what sometimes happens in proofs, and this is perhaps a little bit... Um, we haven't seen a case of this, but you have to, this is something that happens quite a lot, is we have to split in cases. So split into cases. Because we said, if we have, if we know, not L or not S, then at least one of them is true. So case one, we are in the not L case, and case two would be in the not S case. It has to be at least one of them. It could be that we're in both cases, but... If either case gives me the truth, the conclusion, then I'm fine, right? Okay, so now that I have unraveled it that way, let's see, can I get somewhere now? Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm saying, okay, this is now a truth. In, 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 I'm looking at two tough, different scenarios. In this scenario, this is a truth. And of course, everything else that I have is already truth, right? And I'm going to use this on two. So let me copy two here, so two. I'm going to use not L, then G. And from that, I'm going to do you know, the modus ponens. I'm just going to write MP now. Uh, I can conclude G. Good. And from that, I use now the third uh, implication. G implies not O. And together with G, this uh, I can conclude. I have, the, I have the hypothesis. I have an implication of which the hypothesis is true. So the conclusion is true. Not O. Ah, that's fine. That's exactly what I wanted. So if I am in this kind of case, the first case, I'm done. What about the second case? So suppose I have not S. What I'm now thinking of is applying this to 1, because there I have the O then S. So we have an implication, and we know that negation of the conclusion is true. So again, we can use uh, one of our inference rules, this time modus tollens, to include that it not can, it's not the case that our hypothesis is true. So that is a uh, modus tollens. Ah, but that's also what I want. So what we see is that although at this point we don't know which of the two cases are going to happen, it doesn't matter because in either case the conclusion is that he that it's not old. Okay, and that is how you uh, finish the proof. So. If you write this down, show me all the steps that you do. If you have to split in two cases, I'm not saying that you will have something like that, but if you have to, make sure that you split in two cases, that you cover all the pay over everything. If you say if you split in two cases, you have to make sure that you cover everything. Okay, that's the preparation for the quiz.